Well, this is a this will be a new series of videos in parallel computing. I will be discussing the general problems that we face when we try to parallelize the sequential code, right? And the common solutions to it, and possibly I'll be uh, continuing my research in this area. If I find something new as well, I might share in the future, right? Sapto. So the very basic, I mean, the very, uh, like the, um, this is the first problem that anyone comes across when dealing with a parallel code. So the idea is that we have, let's say a n number of cores. So usually the number n would be, let's say one, which is like, the old computers where they, they had only one CPU each I mean and two there are two processors like 4 8 16 32 and 64 and so on right supercomputers have many more cores okay but the problem here is that all these cores they share a common memory the memory is usually the RAM right they all share a common RAM okay. and that's not uh, the that's not the beginning of the problem right right the the problem is that we are trying to parallelize the sequential code so in the Esther years like the previous years for example most of uh, um, most of the algorithms runs sequentially even though the computer supports multi-core okay even though the computer has multiple cores most of the programs they just utilize a single core if you want to uh, increase the speed of the execution of the program we need to find an efficient way to use the available cores but at the same time we, are, we should also ensure the correctness of a code okay so let's consider a simple case right i will just start with an example so we have a whiteboard assume that this is a whiteboard and we have three persons alice bob and kate the role of alice and bob is to write messages both alice and bob's write to that whiteboard and Kate reads from the whiteboard okay so Kate reads actually reads from the whiteboard so the arrow will be in this direction so Kate reads from the whiteboard okay assume that uh, Alice starts to write a message in the whiteboard so alice starts with h and proceeds to write e at the same time bob writes by okay so what bob do bob does bob just overwrites h to b it erases the h and writes b and then but alice still continues to write e yes sorry l but the the, the alice wants to write the message here but Bob's going to write the message by and at the same time Bob writes Y overwrites Y overwrites E by writing Y okay and now Kate reads this message what Kate sees Kate sees BYL but this is not the message that Kate was intended to see right and this is a problem we need a way to synchronize the reads and writes of the common shared memory. Right. So one of the, uh, so this is a much more a solid problem. I will give you a much more concrete example that we encounter in uh, writing a con I mean, parallel program. Assume that we have an integer 
an integer four bytes right so in an integer is re usually represented using four bytes okay an integer variable assume that it is a variable and this is it is its memory our goal is uh let's say we have two threads let me name the threads t1 and t2 their role is to uh, for example t1 has to increment the shared memory by 100 times and t2 also uh, going to increment this shared memory by 100 times so the, so we want uh, the value in this uh, initially all the uh, initially the mem all the 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 memory is i mean the variable is initialized to zero so zero everywhere okay so the final product so what do we want so expected so the expected result after the execution of these two threads is let's say 100 plus 100 it's to be 200 so how 200 will be expressed in four bytes so the basic let me say <laughs> so it's just 200 i don't want to uh let's say work with uh, byte con conversion between base 2 and base 10 okay so 200 is a desired result but what will usually happen is that if you don't use proper synchronization mechanisms uh, we will get an answer much less than 200 okay so if you don't use proper synchronization without synchronization without synchronization version the answer would be less than 200 so why that is the case because let's say initially both uh, t1 both t1 and t2 reads zero right then in the next iteration t1 writes one okay next t1 writes one t2 also computes the increment so t2 also computes the increment of zero to be one okay then t2 also writes one but both t1 and t2 has incremented right so the result should, should ideally the result should be two but that's not what we observe okay we will only observe one so let me uh, show you in real time mm. with the code okay the parallel code So this piece of code here, right, explain this uh, property very clearly, okay? I mean, I'm not going to explain you all the, for example, we, uh, I'm, I'm here, I have used a pthread uh, library. So this is an inter library, I mean, interface which allows uh, the programmer, the C programmer to create uh, threads, right? So a pro in a process, a process is an abstraction. For example, in an, in an operating system, every uh, every program runs as a process. So, for a, for a single process, there can be multiple threads. Allocate, uh, can be allocated to a single process. So, all these threads can work concurrently. So, that's a, that's a, uh, that's, a, that's a, I mean, that's actually a difference between concurrency and parallelism. So, that will be in another video. I mean, you can uh, read about it in, in internet, right? It's a very um, important but basic topic okay so here i have uh, defined the function unsafer so the goal is that i'm going to create two threads t1 and t2 both the threads has to increment this global sum variable right by thousand this global sum variable by thousand the expected by ten thousand so the expected answer is twenty thousand okay so that is the goal right so this is how uh, the function declarations and uh, definitions should be not to use this but all this information will be uh, i should uh, create a new video for that but right now the goal is to just teach you uh, just teach you the concepts okay so here there is no synchronization synchronization is done in this unsafe add function so both thread t1 and t2 can uh access the uh, access the sum variable at the same time both can write to the sum variable at the same time but that is not desired okay 
but in the safe add function we use a synchronization primitive called log right so because of the synchronization primitive this piece of code this piece of code will only be allowed to execute by a single thread by only be allowed to execute by single thread these logs are usually implemented uh, with the help of the hardware and uh, operating system primitives okay so the programmer can simply use it uh, without uh, with assurance that it works as intended okay so in the main function i have created to uh, i have initial i mean i have declared through thre two threads and first at the beginning i have created two threads with the unsafe add function so uh, so first both the threads execute the unsafe add function then i join the uh, join the two threads okay so the what does the join it means it join just waits for the both the threads to complete and you just print the unsafe result right so the sum with race condition so i mean uh, both the threads writing to the same uh, shared memory at the same time is called the race condition okay i mean there are, there are uh, various types of race conditions which are called memory hazards okay and next i redeclare i mean i reinitialize the sum variable to zero the global sum variable to zero and i create the next through threads with safe add now they have to execute the safe add function right and similarly i just collect the wait wait for the two threads to complete and i just print the result of safe add right the code will be uh, shared in github okay so let me execute the code i mean i have already compiled the code and this is uh, in the object of format so i'll just execute it right so you, as you can see the sum with race condition is actually, actually is, uh, something like 15,670 and the safe sum is 20,000 so every time you execute it you will get a different result wow so here we have get got the exact result but it's actually a miracle so let's re-execute it again let's re-execute again 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 and every time this is a different result and this is not expected behavior right every time different result okay what you should know is that sometimes sometimes the code just uh, returns a correct value so this is uh, very problematic uh, why it's problematic because when using when you're using parallel code sometimes your test cases it will get passed but when the uh, when, when it goes to production it fails right you you never want that to happen you want all the failures to happen during production time right yeah so as you can see every time the result of the unsafe addition is less than 20 less than or equal to 20000 okay so that's it for this video uh i hope to see you in the next one please like and subscribe for new videos almost every day thank you